Dear Environmental Sciences Teachers, As you now know, climate change is one of the most significant issues of our time, and its impacts are becoming inseparable from our day-to-day -day lives. It is critical that our students are made aware of this issue and that they understand this problem from different disciplinary perspectives. In this video lecture, we show the link between climate change and Earth's environment and changes to the environment and show you teachers how you can teach topics in environmental sciences using a climate related example. This is over and above the topic of climate change that you might be teaching in your environmental sciences syllabus already. In this lecture, we present educational resources that bring climate studies into the mainstream undergraduate environmental sciences curriculum. As teachers, this will allow you to teach topics in environmental sciences using climate related examples and you do not have to deviate from your prescribed syllabus. However, the usage of such educational resources will lead to an increased climate awareness amongst your students in your classrooms. Again, I'd like to reiterate that you as a teacher of environmental sciences can continue to teach topics as per your syllabus but the use of climate related examples would lead to greater understanding of this critical issue amongst your students. Using these digital pedagogical tools in your classroom, you can learn how to incorporate a multidisciplinary approach to teaching. How do you introduce relevant topics, in this case climate change, in your discipline? How do you effectively use technology in the classroom? And how do you enhance your students' learning? You can integrate climate science in your teaching and use educational resources to teach topics in your syllabus such as climate change and global warming itself, energy, traditional forms of it such as fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, etc. and newer renewable sources of energy, carbon emissions, carbon footprints, water security, food security, agroecosystems, crop yields, human health and disease, climate refugees and environmental migration, species extinction, migration and migratory patterns, the concept of the Anthropocene and many other such topics. Let us take a, uh, take a look at a few lesson plans uh, that allow you as an environmental sciences teacher to integrate topics as per your syllabus through the use of climate related examples. The lesson plans that we we'll look at in this video lecture include black carbon and its impact on earth's climate, aerosols and climate, hydrocarbons, teaching about climate change and food security or climate change and agriculture and a lesson plan on environmental migration or climate refugees. A lesson plan titled Black Carbon and its Impact on Earth's Climate. As an undergraduate environmental sciences teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools to teach about allotropy, various allotropes of carbon, their structure and physical properties, what are black carbon, their sources and how do they impact Earth's climate. This lesson plan will help your students understand the concept of allotropy, understand or know about the various allotropes of carbon. Your students will learn about black carbon, the effect of black carbon on Earth's albedo and therefore its impact on Earth's climate. This lesson plan will also help students to understand the immediate effect of controlling black carbon emissions and how that can potentially slow down the rate of global warming. Thus. The use of this lesson plan will allow you to integrate the teaching of some topics of environmental sciences with a climate science topic. If you as an environmental sciences teacher are teaching about sources of carbon, allotropes of carbon, black carbon, what might be the heating and cooling effects of black carbon, this can be done from the perspective of environmental pollution and what its effects are on Earth's climate. This can also be related to topics where you are relating pollution to human health. 
If you are teaching such topics, we invite you to take a look at this particular lesson plan. The approximate time required for this lesson plan is between 90 to 120 minutes for your students. This lesson plan contains a reading that first defines what is allotropy, describes some allotropes of carbon and their properties. A short video micro lecture about 6 minutes in length that introduces what black carbon is and describes its impact on both he human health and earth's climate. Another short reading that describes the albedo effect of black carbon and how it affects the nature and formation of clouds resulting in both a warming or a cooling effect of the earth's surface. Finally, there is a classroom or a lab activity for interactive learning for your students where you can discuss the implications of black carbon emission on health and climate. Here is a step by step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in your classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and as a teacher of EVS, you may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. First, introduce the topic using a reading titled Allotropes of Carbon, which is provided by Lumen Learning to introduce to your students what is allotropy and discuss the various allotropes of carbon. You can use this reading to explain the structural details of carbon allotropes, their physical and chemical properties, applications, especially in material sciences. Next, use a short micro lecture titled Black Carbon produced by NBC News Learn to introduce to your students what is black carbon, which is an allotrope of carbon. In this micro lecture, you can have your students understand what might be its sources. This video can be used to also describe the impact of black carbon on health and Earth's climate. You can stress to your student how black carbon contributes to global warming by altering the albedo of both clouds, land and ice surfaces. Discuss with your students how cutting down of these emissions can have an immediate impact on the greenhouse effect caused by it. You can now develop this topic further through the use of an article titled Black Carbon and Warming, It's Worse Than We Thought by Carl Zimmer in Yale Environment 360, which is published by the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. This particular featured article discusses a report that suggests that black carbon is second only to carbon dioxide in its heat trapping power. You can use this reading to explain to your students the various ways in which clouds are affected by soot or black carbon. You can discuss how the albedo effect of black carbon, especially in clouds, affects Earth's atmosphere as well as its surface temperatures. Emphasize to your students how black carbon deposition is speeding up the melting of glaciers, specifically in the Himalayas. Finally, explain to them why a reduction in black carbon emissions could cause an immediate slowdown of the planet's warming. You can now conduct a classroom or a lab activity, which is an interactive way for your students to further understand this particular issue. This activity titled Energy and the Poor, Black Carbon in the Developing Nations has been developed by the Science Education Research Center, SERC, at Carlton College. You can use this activity to discuss with your students or enhance the understanding of how burning of fossil fuels and biomass based fuels results in black carbon emissions and this is more pronounced in developing nations. Use this activity to enable students to critically evaluate the impacts of various household energy sources, how they can synthesize a wide range of social health and environmental impacts and generate solutions to these particular problems. The plan includes downloadable notes for students and for teachers and it also gives you suggested points for discussion with your students. 
you can use this lesson plan, the tools in them and the concepts learned in the lesson plan so far to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. These are questions you can also ask your students. What is an allotrope? What are the various allotropes of carbon? What are the sources of black carbon? What are the different effects of black carbon on clouds? How does it modify rainfall patterns? How does the deposition of black carbon on ice caps affect the melting of ice? Explain how black carbon can have a cooling or warming effect on the planet. What is the effect of black carbon on human health? Learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable your students to 1. Define allotropy and describe some allotropes of carbon. 2. Explain what black carbon is and elaborate its sources. 3. Describe how black carbon affects clouds and cloud formation. 4. Explain the mechanisms of the cooling or heating of the earth's atmosphere due to black carbon. 5. Describe how glaciers are melting faster because of black carbon. And 6. Your students will be able to understand the importance of controlling black carbon emissions in order to potentially reduce global warming. If you or your students would like to make use of further resources, these are provided in our additional resources of this lesson plan. We invite you to take a look at them. A lesson plan titled Aerosols and Climate. This lesson plan will help students understand what aerosols are and what are the major sources of atmospheric aerosols. Students will learn the importance of atmospheric aerosols by evaluating their direct and indirect role in affecting climate. They will also learn how aerosol nanoparticle formations impact Earth's climate through cloud seeding and precipitation. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a topic in environmental sciences. So, if you are teaching about aerosols as well as environmental pollution, we invite you to take a look uh, at this particular lesson plan. The topics in the discipline which are covered include aerosols, their sources, what are aerosol nanoparticles, a little bit about radiative energy balance, the roles of aerosols in cloud formation and specifically look at sulphate aerosols. The approximate time required for this lesson plan for your students is about 40 to 50 minutes. This lesson plan includes a short reading that first explains what aerosols are and describes the different sources of atmospheric aerosols. This reading includes a section on volcanic eruptions as being one of the largest natural contributors to atmospheric aerosols. A short video micro lecture about 6 minutes in length that allows your students to visualize the effect of aerosols on climate, specifically in their role in cloud formation. This video explains how the interaction of aerosols with gas molecules in the atmosphere helps in cloud formation. A classroom or a lab activity which stresses about the different atmospheric aerosols and gases that are released during volcanic eruptions and how they affect Earth's climate. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards using this lesson plan in your environmental sciences classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and as a teacher, you may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. Step 1. Introduce the topic through a reading. This reading titled Atmospheric aerosols, what are they and why are they so important has been produced by the Langley Research Center of NASA and use this reading to discuss with your students what atmospheric aerosols are, what are their main sources. You can use this re reading to explain in detail how aerosols can affect the climate and can cause both heating and cooling on the earth's surface. Emphasize to your students that volcanic eruptions are amongst the largest sources of atmospheric aerosols. You can use the examples that are discussed in this text 
to explain how volcanic eruptions have affected Earth's climate in the past. This is due to the large-scale dispersal of particulate matter and the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. You can further discuss how other main sources of aerosols, dust and anthropogenic sources like smoke particles and sulphate aerosols from the burning of fossil fuels can also affect climate. You can describe to your students how sulphate aerosols are formed in the atmosphere when sulphur dioxide reacts with water to form liquid droplets of sulphuric acids and solid particles of salts of sulphuric acid. You can discuss how the concentration of human contributed sulphate aerosols have increased since the industrial age and how they could possibly affect Earth's climate. Next. Use this short animated video titled Aerosol Nanoparticle Formation that has been produced by the Aerosol Physics and Environmental Physics Winkler Group from the University of Vienna. Using this video, you can help your students to visualize the interaction of aerosol particles and gas molecules in the atmosphere. Use this video to explain how some of these interactions result in molecular aggregates in the atmosphere on which water condenses to form water droplets resulting in cloud formation. Now note that clouds both absorb light from the sun and form a barrier for heat loss from the earth's surface thereby affecting earth's radiation energy balance. Then discuss how aerosols have an indirect effect on earth's climate due to their role in aiding in cloud formation. The next step that you might want to conduct is a classroom hands-on activity. This inquiry based classroom activity is titled Volcanoes and Global Warming and has been produced by Purdue University in the US and this will allow your students to study data of emissions from volcanic eruptions. Firstly, engage your students in a discussion of what kinds of material is ejected into the atmosphere as a result of volcanic activity. This might include fine dust such as ash as well as several grasses, some of which are greenhouse gases. You can use this the text provided here to specify that water vapor, carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide are the main gases released. Of these, water vapor Carbon dioxide are very strong greenhouse gases and can directly contribute towards the warming of the earth's surface. Sulphur dioxide on the other hand has an indirect effect on climate by forming sulphate aerosols. Emphasize to your students the role of these sulphate aerosols on the climate as they directly absorb or reflect light energy or indirectly through cloud formation causing heating or cooling of the earth's surface. The data that is provided in this activity, you can have your students look at it and they can draw some graphs to compare the percentage of different types of gases released during a volcanic eruption from different geographic locations. You can use a section in this, in this tool called extend your thinking to analyze two cases of volcanic eruptions in the past and engage the students in a discussion about the impact of sulphate aerosols on the global climate. Questions or assignments? Use the tools and the concepts learned in this lesson plan to have your students answer the following questions. What are aerosols? What are the sources of atmospheric aerosols? How do atmospheric aerosols aid in the formation of clouds and precipitation? Explain how atmospheric aerosols can have a cooling or warming effect of the planet. What kind of atmospheric aerosols are emitted during volcanic eruptions? Which are the main atmospheric aerosols produced by anthropogenic activities and how can they affect climate? The learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable your EVS students to one figure out what, what aerosols are and what are their main sources. What is the importance of the presence of aerosols in the atmosphere? 
What is the role of aer aerosols in cloud formation and precipitation? What are the mechanisms of cooling and heating effects of atmospheric aerosols on the earth's surface? What might be the possible effects of various types of atmospheric aerosols on earth's climate? If you or your students would like to explore the topic further, some additional resources are provided in this particular section. We invite you to take a look at them. A lesson plan titled Hydrocarbons and Climate Change. In this lesson plan, this set of computer based tools will help you, environmental sciences teachers, to introduce the topics of hydrocarbon in fossil fuels, carbon dioxide released by fossil fuel combustion and the effect of high atmospheric CO2 on Earth's climate and global warming. This lesson plan will help your students to learn about hydrocarbons, the different types of hydrocarbons, how the products of their combustion reactions can potentially lead to climate change. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a topic in either chemistry or environmental sciences. As an environmental sciences teacher, if you are teaching about fossil fuels or the role of carbon dioxide and what, uh, how it affects earth's climate, we invite you to take a look at this lesson plan. The approximate time required for your students in this case is between 45 and 60 minutes. This lesson plan includes a very short video micro lecture about 4 minutes in length that introduces the topics of fossil fuels, how they are formed, how the combustion burning of fossil fuels may lead to an increase in atmospheric CO2 and potentially contribute to climate change. A reading that describes the hydrocarbons as a primary component of fossil fuels the different types of hydrocarbons and the products of combustions of these hydrocarbons. A classroom or a lab activity that demonstrates to your students the thermal properties of CO2, its role as a greenhouse gas and how increased CO2 concentrations due to the combustion of different hydrocarbons in fossil fuels may contribute to global warming. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards using this lesson plan in your environmental sciences classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and you may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. First, introduce the topic of fossil fuels through a short video micro lecture. This video micro, micro lecture title, What's the Deal with Fossil Fuels? has been developed by the California Academy of Sciences. Using this particular video micro lecture, you can emphasize to your students how carbon dioxide released from fossil fuel combustion may lead to global warming. You may use this particular tool to discuss common fossil fuels, how they form and the differences between renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. You can discuss this topic further or explore it in greater detail with your students through an online reading titled Hydrocarbon Combustion, which has been produced by the University of Calgary. Use this teaching tool to demonstrate to your students what are the products of the combustion of different hydrocarbons and to show the students the potential costs and benefits of using different fossil fuels. You may demonstrate this by having your students note how much CO2 per molecule is released due to the combustion of different fossil fuels. Next, you can conduct an interactive classroom or lab activity. Help your students investigate the thermal properties of CO2, its role as a greenhouse gas and how increased CO2 concentrations due to the combustion of different hydrocarbons in fossil fuels may contribute to global warming. This classroom lab activity which is titled this carbon dioxide greenhouse is it effective is developed by the Royal Society of Chemistry. Proceed with the lab activity as is instructed in this particular 
teaching tool. While conducting this activity, have your students observe the effect of applying heat and light energy on CO2 and air. Ask your students if their observations of the thermal properties of CO2 and air allow them to better understand the relationship between increased CO2 due to combustion of fossil fuels and an increase in earth surface temperature since the industrial revolution. You may further discuss impacts of climate change on local and global scales and on different sectors using this particular activity. Questions and assignments. Use the tools and concepts learnt in this lesson plan to discuss with your environmental sciences students answers to the following questions. What are hydrocarbons? What types of hydrocarbons are found in commonly used fossil fuels? Discuss whether methane is a cleaner combustion fuel compared to methanol or ethane. Explain how the burning of fossil fuels is a potential contributor to climate change. Learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable your students to 1. Learn that fossil fuels are primarily composed of hydrocarbons. 2. Compare the products of combustion of various hydrocarbons. 3. Explore the thermal properties of carbon dioxide and air. And 4. Interpret how the combustion of fossil fuels may release greenhouse gases such as CO2 in the atmosphere and may potentially contribute to global warming. If you or your students would like to explore this topic further, some additional resources are provided in this lesson plan and are listed here. A lesson plan titled Climate Refugees and Environmental Migration. As an undergraduate environmental sciences teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools to help you in teaching about topics such as social environmental policy, climate change and human migration, climate refugees, environmental migrants and climate justice. This lesson plan enables students to learn about human migration specifically human migration caused due to climate change and will be exposed to the term what climate refugees are. What is the significance of the word climate refugees? The activity in this lesson plan provides insights into geographic locations whose existence is threatened by climate change and communities that are fleeing their homes resulting in large-scale migration. So, if you are teaching topics such as climate change, human migration, environmental migration, climate justice, climate refugees, social environmental policies, we invite you to take a look at this lesson plan. The approximate time required for this lesson plan is about 120 minutes. This lesson plan includes a reading that first discusses climate change related human migration and the term climate refugees. It describes how climate change is accelerating migration from various parts of the world. It specifies the location of Bangladesh and its capital Dhaka and how people are fleeing from this capital region. A classroom or a lab activity. This is a story map and has an associated activity worksheet to learn about countries and cities that are becoming uninhabitable because of the effects of climate change and communities that are being forced to leave their homes and migrate to new locations. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards using this lesson plan in your environmental sciences classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action you may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. First, introduce the topic of refugees and human migration. Introduce the terms to your students environmental migration and climate refugees. Discuss the reasons for climate change related human displacement and the impending climate refugee crisis by reading the article from The Guardian titled Dhaka the city where climate refugees are already a reality. 
This article will help you provide an actual example of the climate refugee crisis by describing how climate change in Bangladesh is causing large-scale migration of residents from different parts of the country to the capital, Dhaka. Students can also learn about how cities such as Dhaka may struggle to support the large number of incoming environmental migrants. Now, explore this topic in more detail through a map making and visualization technique by using a story map tool titled Climate Migra Migrants, an associated activity worksheet also titled Climate Migrants is provided in this lesson plan. In this activity, your students will learn about several regions and communities that are affected by climate change. These are across the world. Students will understand and discuss the various climate change related problems such as inundation, erosion, drought and desertification, conflict, the strain on resources caused by resulting human migration. A wide range of geographic locations in this tool include Alaska, an island Kiribati, Papua New Guinea and Syria as examples. You can download the associated visualization tool as well as the associated activity sheet in the links provided here. Facilitate a detailed exploration and discussion of the responses to the questions in the worksheet with the help of the story map tool. Questions or assignments. Use the tools and concepts learnt in this lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. What are the reasons for human migration? What are climate change related problems that threaten the existence of some regions in the world? What are the challenges faced by climate refugees or environmental migrants? What are the measures or policies that governments can adopt to tackle the challenges of climate related human migration? Learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable your students to identify climate change related threats to the existence of some regions in the world, describe the problem of environmental migration and the term climate refugees, discuss the challenges faced by climate refugees, enumerate the problems caused by large scale human migration and propose policies to handle the challenges posed by climate change related migration. If you or your students would like to explore this topic further, some of these additional resources might be useful for you. A lesson plan titled Teaching Climate Change and Food Security or Climate Change and Agriculture. As an undergraduate environmental sciences teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools to help you in the teaching of topics such as food security, agriculture, climate change and food security and climate change and agriculture. This lesson plan helps your students to understand the various aspects of food security and the challenges faced in food security and agriculture from different locations in the world. The activities in this lesson plan explore the two-way relationship between agriculture and climate, the impact of food production on the climate and the possible effects of climate change on agriculture production through location specific examples. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a topic in the environmental sciences. The topics in the discipline covered in this lesson plan include food security, agriculture, climate change and food security, climate and the food system, climate change and agriculture. The approximate time required for this lesson plan is between 90 and 130 minutes. This lesson plan includes a micro lecture, uh, two micro lectures here that introduce the concept of food security, explain the factors that impact food security globally and provide examples to explain the link between food production and climate change. There are two teaching activities here, one which we have listed for high school level, 
you may choose to ignore this, but it would be useful to take a look at this particular tool as well. But there is an undergraduate level classroom or a lab activity that uses the example of cocoa production in Africa to help your students explore what are suitable climatic conditions for a crop and to determine how climate change may affect food production. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards using this lesson plan in your environmental sciences classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and you may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. Introduce the topic by playing two video micro lectures. Introduce the topic of food security and discuss the relationship between food production and climate by playing two video micro lectures titled Climate Change and Food Security. This is from a course titled a MOOC of a course titled Our Energy Future produced by the University of California in San Diego and is available on Coursera at Coursera.org. Initiate further discussion on the climate related factors that impact crop yield by playing these video micro lectures. This is from a course titled Our Energy Future also by the University of California. Next, conduct a classroom or a lab activity. You can explore this topic further through a hands-on activity titled Climate Change and Food Security. This is compiled by Roseanne Lowe from the Institute of Global Environment Strategies, Rebecca Roger from Brooklyn College, and Amy Potter from the Armstrong State University. In this activity, Students will learn about the relationship between climate change and food production through the case study of cocoa production in Africa. They will use a tool, a map making tool called ArcGIS Online and will create maps and instructions for the creation of such a map is provided in this particular activity. This activity is hosted at SERC, which is Science Education Research Center, Resource Center at Carleton College. Download the activities and the teaching material available in that at the link that is provided and conduct the activity as is described in the study unit. Questions or assignments. Use the tools and concepts learned so far in this lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. Define food security. What are climate related factors that influence crop yield? How might agricultural practices and livestock farming contribute to climate change? How could climate change affect global food security? Identify actions that could reduce the impact of food production on climate change. Learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable students to define food security, Identify the climate related factors that affect food production and crop yield. Discuss how crop production may cause climate change. Discuss how climate change may impact agriculture. And propose actions that may reduce the footprint of the food system on climate change. If you or your students would like to explore this topic further, some of these additional resources might be useful for you. See more lesson plans that integrate topics in environmental sciences with climate sciences at tropicsu.org. Some of these include ecosystems and food webs, buffer, buffer action and ocean acidification, human health and climate change, impact of climate change on circadian rhythm and sleep, ecological niches and biogeography, permafrost and climate change, and many more. In this section, we would like to present to you some teaching tools. These are standalone teaching tools that you as an environmental sciences teacher may want to use in your classroom to enhance the understanding of discipline specific topics for your students. The usage of such tools will also improve the climate understanding of your students. These might include 
a model or a simulator titled the economics of oil in which your students can predict the peak global oil production and learn about oil as an energy source, its peak and reserves and the economics and geopolitics of oil usage. Another model simulator titled predicting future carbon emissions to learn about what is the Kaya identity to predict future carbon emissions. A reading on climate change related human migration in Bangladesh. A visualization and a classroom lab activity. This is a story map on climate change and human migration and climate refugees. If you want information about how to teach an entire course on climate change other than the one that you are taking, an e-learning course is also available. This includes the basics of climate change science, climate change policies, adaptation, mitigation, climate change finance and action. A short video that presents a realistic and engaging visualization of carbon emissions and rates of carbon emissions in a particular city. A visualization on the pH levels of oceans and atmospheric CO2. It includes visualizations of CO2 concentrations corresponding to various emission scenarios of the IPCC. A reading on hydrocarbon combustion. An entire teaching module on climate change and water that introduces the impact of climate change on water systems and the resulting effects on human society. A lab activity or a classroom activity on permafrost, permafrost and climate change. A classroom lab activity on food security in Africa. A classroom lab activity to learn about glacial retreat and to predict the complete melting of a glacier, in this case in an example in a location called Glacier National Park. A classroom or a lab activity titled Volcanoes and Climate. A classroom lab activity on the thermal potential of CO2. A teaching module on climate refugees. A teaching module on climate change, the environment and human health. A video lecture on food security. An audio podcast titled Has Humanity Pushed the Earth into a New Geological Epoch called the Anthropocene? Various games, including games where you can understand climate vulnerabilities, you can build climate resilient cities, or you can perform resource management for improving the climate resilience of cities by playing a policy maker and many other such tools. Let us take a look at a few of these tools in some detail. The first one is a video titled Visualizing the Carbon Emissions in New York City. This video presents a realistic and engaging visualization of the total carbon emissions and rate of carbon emissions in New York cities. Students will learn about the carbon footprint of a particular city, in this case New York, based on data and this data is from 2010. They will be introduced to exploratory visual techniques of representing numerical data for the general public. You can use this tool to help your students find answers to questions such as can you compare New York City's greenhouse gas emissions from 2014 with that from 2005? Can you design a visualization to represent the contribution of buildings to the total greenhouse gas emissions for a city and so on and so forth. This video has been developed by the Carbon Visuals Project, the Real World Visuals and is present, presented at the link that is shown here. A model or a simulator titled Predicting Future Carbon Emissions. This model or simulator will allow your students to learn about and use a concept called the Kaya identity to predict future carbon emissions. In this model simulators, your students can customize parameters such as changes in population, changes in GDP per capita, energy intensity, carbon intensity of energy sources and will be able to then see what are the model's predictions on future carbon emissions on our planet? 
You can use this tool to help your student find answers to questions such as determine the amount of CO2 emissions and changes in the temperature if the population of planet Earth is doubled. What would happen to the rate of carbon emissions and the resulting surface temperature if our GDP per capita changes its rate and is let's say 2 percent per year and many other such questions. This particular model has been developed by David Archer at the University of Chicago and is present at the link that is provided here. Here is a snapshot of this particular model simulator. Links to this on David Archer's web page will allow you to learn about what this whole model is all about, how to use it, what are some things to do and is presented in terms of a video sort of overview or a guide. This we have seen as part of a lesson plan, but I'd like to draw your attention again to this particular teaching tool, which is a visualization or a classroom lab activity titled a story map on climate change and human migration. This activity allows your students to learn about communities that are affected by climate refugees and migration thanks to climate change. In this tool, your students can apply map making skills to learn about locations in various parts of the world that are becoming uninhabitable and communities that are being forced to leave their homes due to climate change. You can use this tool to ask your students questions such as what are climate refugees? What are climate change related problems that threaten the existence of some regions in the world? As we know some islands are becoming uninhabitable already. What are the challenges that people who are forced to migrate, these climate refugees, what are the challenges faced by such migrants? This tool is developed by ESRI Story Map Team and the Human Imprint Team, which is the associated activity and can be found at the link provided here. Another short classroom lab activity, and again we have looked at this in the climate change and food security lesson plan. But again, I'd like to draw your attention to it because it is a very engaging hands-on classroom lab activity in which your students can learn what are the suitable climatic conditions for crops and how climate change may affect food production. Now, again, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that climate change and its effects on agriculture is going to be a very, very significant issue for various countries, specifically countries such as ours which relies so much on agriculture and the monsoon and so on. In this activity, your students can learn about the relationship about climate change and food production, but they use a case study and this case study is one of cocoa production in Africa and they do this through the creation of maps using a free online tool called ArcGIS. Using such a tool, your students can ask and uh, can answer questions such as what are the possible effects of climate change on various crops, specifically on cocoa in Africa? What might be the impact of cocoa production on the landscape in West Africa itself? This particular lesson plan was developed by the authors shown here and is available at the SERC website at the link that is shown here. There are several other models that you might want to use. Some of them are presented here. These are all of David Archer's models. One of the ones which we like very much to use in our classrooms is something called ISAM, Climate Impacts Model. And just to give you a brief sort of overview of what this model has, is that it allows you to get your students to look at various scenarios of energy use in the medium to short or to long term. In this case, we have chosen an input which is highlighted here called high business as usual scenario. That is, we continue to use energy on planet Earth as we have always or in the past. Shown on the right hand side on top is, if we continue to use a high energy use, what would be the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere? And when you look at this graph in the year 2100, this is expected to be 1000 parts per million. The associated change in temperature for so much CO2 in our atmosphere would be three and a half degrees warmer compared to our 
average surface temperature. Now, as a teacher, you might go into your classroom and say to your students, if we continue to use energy as we have, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere might be a thousand parts per million in 2100 and the CO and the surface temperature will go up by three and a half degrees C and chances are our students will retain this information for a very short period of time. However, if we make our students actually use this particular model and to sort of enumerate what are the amounts of CO2 and the associated surface temperature, the use of this interactive hands-on model will enable our students to further retain this information and better understand the issue as well. So, dear uh, environmental sciences uh, teachers, we hope you have found these educational resources useful and we hope you will use this in your classroom to not only enhance the understanding of environmental sciences topics for your students, but also to make them more aware of the most significant issue of our time, climate change.